Lawful Evil Tyrant. For your crimes against our nation, Baron Faxtix, you are sentenced to death by guillotine. Lawful Evil Noble. Ah, but you cannot execute me in this manner, for the laws forbid the capitation of nobles, nor can you sentence me twice for the same crime. You must let me go free. Lawful Evil Tyrant. This is true. Headsman. Put him in the guillotine backwards. We'll severe his body from his head. Hey, what's up everybody? I'm Skydaray and welcome to another episode of D&D Green Text. This episode certainly, okay, I can guarantee this time, it guaranteed has way more green text than anything else, like Reddit posts or whatever, so you're not allowed to complain anymore. And without any further ado, enjoy the video. Throw me your coolest spells, spell names and what they do. Aura of Fuckery Seizing. Level 3 Paladin Spell. To cast, caster must announce, seize your fuckery. When cast, a 30 meters aura is cast around the caster for 1d4 hours. Any deception, persuasion, intimidation or slave of hand actions used within the aura will automatically fail. Anyone performing these actions must make a con save of 18 or higher, or they will be stunned for 1d4 days. Caster is immune to these effects. Tabaxi Race Volos Guide 30 5 Barbarian for fast movement 10 Elk Totem 15 Wylan Encumbered 5 Monk for Unarmored Movement 10 6 Transmuter Wizard for Stone 10 Level 1 Spell Long Strider 10 Mobility Feat 10 Major Artifact with Speed 10 Boon of Speed 30 Total 135 Tabaxi Felin Agility Times 2 Speed for 1 turn Resets on not moving a turn Boots of Speed Times 2 Speed for 10 minutes after bonus action Level 3 Spell Haste Times 2 Movement 135 times 2 times 2 times 2 equals 1080. Level 3 spell. Haste. Dash action. Plus 100% movement. 2 rogue for cunning action. Dash. Plus 100% movement for bonus action. 2 fighter for action surge. Dash. Plus 100% movement. Standard dash action. Plus 100% movement. 1080 times 5 equals 5400 feet for one turn, or 614 miles an hour. That is 989, almost, kilometers an hour for my European friends. If you have help from a transmuter wizard, cut out the 6 wizard levels and give them to Monk for an extra 6 feet base, or 80 feet per move, for an extra 400 feet, for a total of 5800 feet in one turn. That's equal to roughly 1.76 kilometers. That is the travel for one turn. <laughs> Fastest thing I found online. Goblins get the bonus action to hide. Goblin attacks, then runs behind cover, hides. Take his model off the table to represent him being hidden. He's gone. Goblins can turn invisible. I have detect magic. Players knock on the lich's door. He opens it, shakes his head, closes the door. Players hear some annoyed ramaging. The leech opens the door again, sliding a bear trap out with a gold piece in the jaws. Norin's D&D Paladin has a shield that whispers to him, in addition to his talking sword and screaming battle axe of warning. Dude is a walking barbershop quartet of awful. Also, our cleric polymorphed me into a Tyrannosaurus for a boss fight, and I was so much more effective in combat than usual, that I think for my next campaign I'm just going to roll a T-Rex. Need some feedback on some house rules for an upcoming open table campaign I'm going to be running at my FLGS. I realized some of my house rules were a bit too restrictive, so I decided to loosen up. Very and human allowed, made into some sub-race. Alert, athlete and linguist feats are banned. Allowed races. Gnome, Goliath, Half Gnelf, <laughs> and Genesee. Multiclassing only permitted if you take one level in each class. No Paladins, Eldritch Knights, Arcane Tricksters, or Warlocks. Can use anything from Wizards of the Coast books otherwise. No Homebrew allowed. No UA shit allowed. No bonus actions allowed. No posters who call me a judo head allowed. Point buy only for equipment. No backstories longer than 10 words. Experience gibberish because leveling up is way too gibberish in 5th edition. Yeah, after some intense research, those words, apparently they don't mean anything. Just some random, some random letters. Thoughts? Are this better? Need to infiltrate a noble's estate in the city. Party climbs the fence. I climb with my full plate. 
Okay, I need you to make an athletics check to come down safely on the other side. Roll a free. Drop from the fence to the ground in full plate. Only two guards show up, but they rough us up due to bad rolls. No one else wakes up or notices or hears anything. Tell the DM we're slowly moving to the stables. Roll a 4 on my stealth check. DM lets it slide. We get to the stables. Horses start making horse noises in the dark. DM says we can't see. I light up a torch in the middle of the night in the stables. DM lets it slide. Move to pacify the horses. Roll a 3 on my animal handling check. DM lets it slide again. Ok DM, since we're now in the stables, we'll take a quick 1 hour short rest. Do you guys turn off the light? No, then we can't see. DM pretends to roll some dice, as if, and lets it slide as usual. Thank you DM, you're the best. I'll start. Be me, playing an eldritch knight in a war campaign. Be not me, three other players, all playing full casters. Be also not me, final player playing a monk. It's a mage unit, already our comp is shit. DM tells everyone in advance that the campaign is gonna be deadly. The rest of the party ignores him. Ok hand? One of the other players casts hypnotic pattern. I'm in the radius. He knows this. Casts it anyway. Enemy mage immediately bypasses me, the now incapacitated tank, and kills the bard. Oops that jpeg. Party trudges on because YOLO. Monk dies because 5th level and outnumbered. Party continues on anyway. The planet will break before the guard that gif. Another character dies. Everyone else is downed. The unit is disgraced. GDM, you never told us the combat was gonna be this hard. We should rethink our comp. My face when? Be me, Dragonborn Fighter. Name myself Dragiel O'Neill. Have a high dexterity and high strength, low charisma. Decide to get myself a companion. Decide on a Cobalt Fighter. Tells me his name is Kobe Bryant. There is never a bad time for corn. Be me, Kenku Bard. Be, not me, human cleric, tabaxi fighter, and human paladin. Returning to employer's workplace to discuss terms of employment after local festivities. Shady figure approaches employer. Try and sneak up with cleric to listen in on conversation. Cleric rolls for stealth, natural 20. My roll? 6. DM, in your attempt to sneak up, a tasty looking discarded corn cob catches your eye. Have low intelligence, so don't think to pick up corn. Bend down and peck at corn. Cleric listens in on conversation. Shady figure. We've given you enough warnings. You know you're not welcome here. Employer. You can't scare me. I've got my own mercenaries now. Employer gestures in my direction and turns around. Employer's face when? The corn was good. Be creative. The DM may reward you. Be me, druid. Party of sorcerer, monk and warrior. Investigating town's smuggling problem. Walk into a tavern to buy a room for the night. Tavern completely empty except for barkeep. Talk to barkeep. Monk mentions something about our business in town. Tavern is the front. Barkeep stabs monk. Crits. Dying. I have magic item. Let's me reverse time by 5 seconds. Use it. Interrupt barkeep in the middle of sentence with a thunder wave. Barkeep pushed back. All bottles behind the counter shatter. Beat the shit out of barkeep. Find hidden hatch behind bar. Sounds like 5 to 7 people in the basement. Party has idea. Sorcerer uses Dust Devil. Dust Devil picks up all the broken glass. I use Poison Spray on the Dust Devil. Sorcerer moves Dust Devil over to Hatch. Monk opens Hatch. Tornado filled with poison, slashing and bludgeoning enters basement. DM audibly laughs. Muffled screaming ensues. Soon becomes quiet. Party enters basement. Piles of viscera everywhere. Discover secret tunnel for smuggling. Alert town guards. Monk rolls persuasion. Guards agree to give us deeds to the bar in exchange for services. Base of operations established. PC is married. Spend sometimes years away at a time away from his wife, who is established by his own request as a saucy barmaid. He never sends money. She ends up cucking him with the innkeeper. Player finds out and throws an IRL tantrum. Screaming at me, pounding the table, spittle flying. He has to be restrained by his best friend from attacking me. We can hear him still shouting and crying outside as his friend takes him home. What the fuck did I do? On a scale of 10 to 10, how much did the innkeeper look like you? And with that boys, that's gonna be the episode for today. I hope you enjoyed it, don't forget to leave a like if you did and subscribe for more, it helps me out more than you think. 
As always, link to my Twitch live stream and the Discord server in the description. And yeah, that's all. Thank you guys again for watching, and I'll see you next time. Have a great day, bye!